Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, I just put up a, an article on my website, quantlabs.net slash blog, entitled How to Run Docker, RabbitMQ, and Python Pika, P-I-K-A, Package. All right, so the reason I'm doing this is because I tested out a database yesterday, spent many hours on testing it. it doesn't keep up. It's an internal in-memory, or can be in-memory database with... Um, totally self-contained in Python called TinyDB. Put up some code instructions there. You can check out that article there if you want. So tested it, doesn't quite work, can't keep up with heavy load data. So here we are testing out something simpler uh, called, which is built, well, 0MQ is the one that started the whole thing, but um, this rabbit MQ is a lot more advanced. So we're gonna have to go through some instructions to go through this, this is now assuming you want to run it on a Mac OS, can run on Windows and Linux, but the instructions obviously would be different. So first thing is you have to install uh, Docker onto your um, computer. In my case, um, you would install the um, the desktop version. Now I'm going to be running this on a command line. In Linux, so I might provide instructions for that as well, and that's going to be on a uh, remote hosted um, website or domain or server account, um, which is kind of like cloud, but I own the cloud. So, what you do is install the Docker desktop in this case for Mac. Once you get that running, you will get access to this little uh, app in your tray where you can <clears throat> basically restart. Load in your Kubernetes, Kubernetes, um, and so forth. I'm using the Community Edition. Uh, so once you get that running, um, as I said here, and then you want to get that installed for Mac. From there, a um, couple things you would want to do is I've got all the um, instructions here at the at the article on my blog, but here you have to, once you get that running, you will have to um, run this command right here. Uh, this on your command line in your, in your terminal. So reason you have to do this because ultimately we want to run some code here that I've posted as well using um, RabbitMQ uh, the Pika package for Python, and you have two separate programs or uh, uh, Python scripts, send and receive. So the send will receive out the message, and then receive will receive it and process the queue. So that's what I did. I have two separate um, terminal sessions here. You can see here it works, but if you don't get Docker, RabbitMQ install, what you'll get is you'll get this AMPQ connection error. That's why you need to first install Docker, then run your, um, your uh, RabbitMQ. So for RabbitMQ here, what you're doing is you are running a Docker image um, that's stored online at uh, this um, location, you have the password, I believe, or port as well. <clears throat> and you have running this Docker image, okay? Uh, or sorry, you're running the RabbitMQ image. So that's fairly easy. Now, once you get that running, uh, which will look like this, okay? So you can see here, <laughs> It will, uh, let's see what I can launch here. Well, wow, it's quite a bit. So in here, Docker run hello world. So that you could test to see if Docker's running. So this is the, the RabbitMQ you will set up and run. So it does a bunch of pulls. And then, so if there's a newer image, you will download that. You gotta, you gotta like how Docker works. And then it is supposedly open source, but um, 
either way, MQ, Rabbit MQ is running, and now you can run these uh, commands to push uh, messages over the queue. So how that works in a nutshell, I obviously read these articles, is in the send, you will uh, set up your um, connection to MQ, sorry, to Rabbit MQ, which is local. In my case, obviously, I'll remote host remote it, or remote it, host, host it remotely. <clears throat> and then it sets up a queue called hello. And then uh, it'll send out a message. It's very similar. I'll tell you, Redis um, is much simpler for this. Um, so for me, I might stick with Redis. I don't know yet. But um, here I can control the um, with RabbitMQ. I have control over the uh, um, access control with RabbitMQ and Pika if I want. The problem with my web hosting company is with Redis 6, you have now access control, which is not version. Unfortunately, with my uh, hosting company, they're still on dinosaur version of uh, Redis 2 or 3, and they won't upgrade it. So I'm kind of stuck. So I'm hoping that this will work out fine with RabbitMQ. And then some, so, so send the message over with the send script. And then it sets up the um, queue called hello and then sends out the message to anything that's listening to it. Um, sends out that message routing key, which is the, the queue, and then the message. And then before you could set that up, you have to run, obviously, receive Python script. Um, and then it goes and does all the credentials here, connecting into localhost. Uh, hello. And then this will, if you wanted to do a remote, you just, it'll instruct you, you got to use your IP, which is fine. And then um, you have here your message being received. And then once you get it, then you can start doing whatever you want on the callback once we get the message back. All right. So kind of straightforward and not straightforward. But um, this is how it works. So hopefully um, this will help you out. And uh, we shall talk to you soon. Have yourselves a good day.